Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. But who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, board certified criminal defense lawyer. What does that mean? That means I actually try cases. I just don't write passports to prison. It's not what I do. I try cases and I win cases. So today we are reacting to the former drug trafficker, Johnny Mitchell. Uh, Before we get into that, though, this episode, like all of our episodes, are brought to you by eForms.com eforms.com what did i say eforms.com you need a power of attorney you need a business agreement you need a bill of sale you need an eviction whatever you need any kind of legal form whatsoever doesn't matter what state you're in you go to eforms.com don't hire a guy like me to create the form that i would just go to eforms.com and get anyway you save yourself a bunch of money and go to eforms.com it's an awesome resource i use it you should too so today we're reacting to a former drug trafficker he talks about the different aspects so let's just get into it and i'll react to it a load of colombian cocaine from sinaloa onto a ship and have that ship go up the pacific past california and land in the port of coos bay oregon which is a tiny little port town right there on the oregon coast about halfway through the state he told me he wanted to do a test run with 200 keys and he was going to hide them in a big avocado shipment from Mexico. First of all, 200 kilos of cocaine is a lot of dope. That is a lot of dope. In fact, hang on one second. Let's take a look. Let's open the Bible. This is the Federal Sentencing Guidelines Manual. And let's see what 200 kilos of cocaine gets you in the federal system with no, with no prior felonies. In looking at the guideline for this kind of offense, 200 kilos we're talking about, right? At least 150 kilos, but less than 450 kilograms of cocaine. So 150 to 450, anywhere in that range, it's a level 36. What does that mean? So when you look at the sentencing guidelines, you have your offense severity level on one side, and then you have your criminal history. Let's say the person has zero criminal history at a level 36. You're looking at 188 to 235 months. That's almost 20 years, 15 to 20 years, basically. 15 to 20 years. Just opened an avocado business and he had an avocado farm. So he had an easy way to actually get the Coke in the avocados onto the ship. What he needed was somebody to receive it on the state side. And what he wanted me to do was actually create a fake vegetable import company that would receive the avocados on this end. And he told me he'd pay me $100,000 just for putting my name on the LLC. $100,000 to put your name on the LLC. Well, what do we call this? It's called a conspiracy. What's a conspiracy? It is two people or more with an agreement to commit a criminal act and then an act in furtherance of that. So he doesn't have to do any of the touching of the drugs. Just putting his name on that corporation is enough. I got two DEA agents and Homeland Security in there, and I said, I may never get out. I might be doing life. That's immediately where my mind went to. I'm like, I am so f-ed, beyond f-ed. See, I mean, and here's the other thing. If he, he, where did he say this before this was coming from? Sinaloa. And if you're in with the cartel, what's one of the first things that they do? Oh, I'd like to meet your family. I'd like to see where you live. You know, and why do they do that? Because if you become a snitch, pop, pop, pop. Every step of this just kept getting worse and worse. So they sat me down and they said, we're with the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, and this is our partner with Homeland Security. They open up a manila folder and they said, do you know Andres? Throw a picture down of his dead body. This is Andres, the money launderer from Cartagena. And I almost fainted. That is some scary shit right there. First of all, the cartel is, I mean, the law enforcement is scary enough, right? But the cartel is just as scary, if not worse. And I was so stunned. I had no saliva left. There was no, there was no ratting or informing because I could not physically speak. That's called stress. <laughs> That's hard motherfucking core stress. So when I think about this, I, I think about a Snapchat that my client got and you know it was a message she received from the cartel and it was uh, this person whose chest was basically ripped out of his body 
the idea is there is no loyalty with the cartel, number one. There's no fucking with the cartel. There's no way you can there's no there's no really upside to a guy like this. To the desk where we get our initial search, right? And there's this dude in front of me. And as he's being patted down by the jail guard, guards like patting down his chest area, I see this little white thing fall out of his pants. And I look down, it's a crack sack. This guy's got what looks to be a half an ounce or a whole ounce of crack. And I said, oh my God. And I look at the guy and I just see a bead of sweat running down his face. He doesn't say anything. And the guard said, okay, you're good. Next person. And I walk up there and I'm getting patted. I'm getting searched. And an orderly starts walking by. And orderlies are inmates who do stuff around the prison to make a little bit of money. And this guy's sweeping the floor. I look over my left shoulder as I'm getting patted down. He looks down, looks up at me and sweeps the ounce of crack into the dustpan and keeps moving. You know, <clears throat> have you ever seen the show Locked Up Abroad? You know, they have people drug trafficking. I, I've, I've handled a lot of drug trafficking cases over the last 25 years. Some high level people, some low level people, some people in the middle. And it never ceases to amaze me. The guys at the very top almost never get pinched. Almost never. And the guys on the bottom who don't know Jack always get pinched. You know, and they're what they call mules. You know what a mule is? A mule is somebody that just moves the dope, right? They pay him a little bit of money and they're expendable, right? There's people that aren't necessarily, first of all, they don't know Jack, all right? They don't have any names. The phone numbers are constantly changing, so they don't have any good contact information by the time they get busted. And so they're, so they're left with these large amounts of dope, and, and, they, and a lot of times they can't snitch their way out of it, so they, they wind up getting a lot of time. And so it breaks my heart when I hear stories like this because it is so stressful. Most of the dope cases are all built by snitches. You know, that's how they, they know when the shipment's going to come. They know this, they know that. And so when you get a low-level guy or even a mid-level guy who doesn't know the end deal, the sentence is like I was telling you, uh, on just that one deal, that would be 188 to 235 months. Those are, those are like homicide sentences, you know, on drug cases. That's with zero criminal history. If you have any criminal history, it's 10 times more. That's why they say if you're a criminal and you want to meet other criminals, if you want to network, the best place to go is jail. They call it the Department of Connections. That's what we referred to the DOJ. As opposed to the Department of Corrections. Yes. If you're a drug dealer and you're looking for a good connect, the county jail is a good place to start. Not true. Because guess what people are in the jail? This. They're fucking snitches. So... That, that's probably the worst place they get a connect. Everybody's talking, everybody's exchanging phone numbers. You know, it's like getting an education in crime. You hear about how other people got arrested. But Here's the thing, when you go to jail, and nobody in there is your friend. Nobody in there is your friend. And everybody's looking for a way out. And so if you tell somebody, bub, 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 you have no idea if they're gonna call their lawyer and say, I need to talk to the cops because so-and-so just told me this. And all of a sudden you get snitched out. It happens all the time. I never like to have my clients have their paperwork in custody because what people do is they'll, especially if it's a bigger case, like a homicide, or if it's a big conspiracy case, people will read your paperwork and then call their lawyer and then snitch on you. And then they pretend like you told them all these facts. Actually, one time I did this and it was actually really fucking funny because we put police reports from a totally different incident that were totally made up and somebody tried to snitch against my client and guess what? He was full of shit because he had the wrong facts. The kind of lawyers they have, I mean, it's, uh, it's a boot camp for how to do crime. I can't tell you how many times throughout the period of my incarceration I would meet other criminals whether they were buyers or suppliers or whoever, and they would say, hey, as soon as we get out, we got a link, we got to start working together. And I would say, yeah, yeah. And now, now I know how to do it differently. I'll do it better this time. That false sense of security is such bullshit because law enforcement, you know, you know, you, you know what Facebook is. It's, you know, all these different webs of links, you know, people, oh, I haven't seen so-and-so in so long, you know, law enforcement has the same thing. You know, they get one guy, and, all right, you want to get out of this? You gotta tell them three people. 
and then those three people, and then, you know, and they have a web of snitches. So they know, and they come to talk to you. And so when they, when they are asking you questions, they already know the answer half the time. And networking with people in there, never, never, never a good idea. I am at my arraignment listening to the U.S. attorney read off my charges to the judge. And I'm just waiting to hear that number. I'm waiting to hear how much it's going to cost me to get out of jail. And that's when I hear the U.S. attorney say to the judge, the court recommends a no bail hold on this. When you have a big conspiracy case, it's presumed detention. What does that mean? That means the judge has to, has to detain you unless you can convince him otherwise. Mr. Mitchell, he goes, from the amount of cash that the government seized from Mr. Mitchell for his clearly international uh, criminal connections, we deem Mr. Mitchell a flight risk. I look over at the judge and she agreed. And she hit her gavel and said, okay, well, Mr. Mitchell's denied bail. At that moment, I, I knew we were in for a fight. I knew that I'm gonna have to dig in and fight my case from the belly of the beast, from jail. You know, I, I kind of like this, these snippets, because it is a uh, peer into the window of, of drug trade and and the risks. And, uh, you know, I mean, are there rewards? Sure, there are rewards. You get access to drugs if you're into drugs. You get access to a lot of cash. Can you spend the cash necessarily? Not necessarily. Is the risk of getting caught high? I always said there's no safe way to use or deal because everybody who does that eventually gets busted unless you're paying off government officials in a foreign country. But it's it's a tough, tough, tough racket. And so this has just been a little glimpse. And I, I really like everything he had to say. I didn't disagree with a single thing. But you got to do the risk reward. And guess what? It's so much easier to build something. It's so much easier to to go to college and to do things the right way or or you know start small with your own business or or do things legitimately and just slowly build sure you're not going to get the the cash immediately you know but guess what it's slow steady and you don't have to look over your shoulder and that there's no price that you can put on not having to look over your shoulder so this is bruce rivers thank you for watching make sure you subscribe go down to bonfire make sure you order uh, a bucket hat and a, a hoodie and a t-shirt and a regular hat or whatever you want for your loved ones it's uh spread the word stop self snitching we'll see you next time here on criminal lawyer reacts make sure you subscribe follow us on instagram follow us on twitter we'll see you next time here on criminal lawyer reacts Bruce Rivers just broke down your case He know all the charges that you about to face You ain't coming home till 2058 That self snitching gon' get you put away Bruce Rivers just broke down your case He know all the charges that you about to face You ain't coming home till 2058 That self snitching gon' get you put away 23 hour lockdown, please is that my goal?